Hey everyone, welcome, ready to dive deep. Today, we're tackling Michel Serres, specifically his Hermes for lot distribution. Yeah, it's a fascinating but dense one. Buckle up. For sure. We're exploring how knowledge is structured, you know, not just what we know, but the how and why of it. Exactly. And Serres blends science and philosophy in a way that makes you rethink. Well, thinking itself, almost. Right from the start, he throws down this line. There is no history of science. There are only monographs or associations of monographies with an empty intersection. Whoa. He's challenging us right off the bat. Sayers is basically saying the way we usually see the history of science, this straight line, it's an illusion. Like we divide everything into biology, physics, neat categories, but that's not how it actually works. Like, yeah, a map is helpful, but a city's more than streets. Sayers is interested in the spaces between disciplines. The marketplace of ideas, right, where stuff gets messy, overlaps. He calls it distribution. Knowledge isn't isolated. It's constantly being traded, transformed in that marketplace. I like that. So instead of separate stalls, it's all kind of flowing together. What's an example of this distribution in action? He talks about the concept of a point, but appearing across fields, like the center of a circle in geometry. Okay, I see where you're going with this. But also the fulcrum of a lever in physics, or even where coordinates start in math different fields, same underlying idea. It's like that point carries the idea between them, a common thread. Makes you wonder what else we're missing just because of categories. Right. Have you ever felt that like the way we learn is too artificial? All the time. But this interconnectedness, Sarah says it's not free. There's this balance sheet of negentropy. Meaning knowledge has a cost, an energy investment. Like his quote, any knowledge has a price, a cost indexed on the label. Huh. Like every discovery has trade-offs, unintended consequences, stuff we don't see right away. And that's what's so cool about Sarah's. He makes you question the very process of learning, not just the facts themselves. It's about how it's structured, how we acquire it. Man, this is already making me think differently. It's not just about knowing more, but knowing how we know and the impact of that. It's wild. So this marketplace of ideas, this web of knowledge... How do we even grasp something so complex? Well, that's where Sayers brings in models, metaphors. He uses them to make these big ideas understandable. Okay, like what? How can a metaphor help us with, say, the structure of knowledge itself? He uses the game The Wolf and the Lamb to show how power plays into it. Imagine a game where the wolf always wins by design. Sounds unfair, but go on. Right. But Sayers says the lamb can outsmart this. The lamb wins by proving there's no higher rule than the wolf's own power. Oh, it's like the lamb hacked the game, showing the power structure is flawed, not just the wolf itself. Exactly. It's not really about a wolf and lamb. It's how knowledge gets framed by those in charge. That reminds me, he also talks about the myth of the Danaides. Right? Yes. Those women doomed to fill a bottomless jar. For Sayers, that's us, always seeking knowledge, never reaching an end. Always more to learn, both exciting and kind of daunting. It goes against determinism, the idea that everything is predecided. Like he says, determinism, the closed legislator, ends the column of debit of his own accord. The real is lawless. The real is and is not rational. So we're not just cogs in a machine. There's room for surprise, for things to go differently than expected. And that makes the search for knowledge exciting. It's the journey, the unexpected links, not some fixed endpoint. Which leads us to how do we even navigate a world that feels this complex. It's something we're all dealing with, honestly. Or that's where Sarah's chaos cloud comes in. Chaos cloud. That sounds kind of ominous, honestly. What's that all about? Think about it like every day, right? We're bombarded with info, news, social media. It's overwhelming. I'll tell me about it. My inbox is drowning right now. Sarah saw this as a kind of cloud, but of data and not something to be scared of, but like dive into. Dive in to chaos. That's kind of his solution. It's more like he saw it as the source of new stuff, new ideas. You can't have order without a little chaos first. Hmm. So not running from the chaos, mm -hmm. but like looking for the pattern within it. Yeah. Like that crowd at the Avanches Fair, remember? He describes it like a river flowing. It looks random, but there's a flow to it. Okay. I kind of see it. But how do we do that? With our own info overload, how do we find the river? Here's where it gets really wild. The human body... Sarah says it's like a language processor. Wait, seriously, 
Our bodies are processing info like words on a page. He compares it to nested systems, like imagine Russian dolls, each one inside the other, all working together. I'm trying to picture it. Keep going. Each of those systems, like our organs, our senses, they're like languages, taking in data, making it mean something. So it's not just our brain doing the thinking, it's our whole system. That's kind of cool. And it's not always perfect, right? Sarah's talks about ambiguity, how our bodies might interpret things in weird ways. He even calls the body a time exchanger. A time exchanger. Now, that's got to be a metaphor for something. It means different timelines are happening in us. Some stuff slow, some fast, some even reversing. It's how we make sense of the chaos. This is blowing my mind a little, I got to be honest. Like, we're not just learning about knowledge, but how our very being is part of it. That's Sarah's for you, always pushing those boundaries. And he doesn't give us all the answers, more like, more questions to think on. Which I guess is the point, right? Keeps us exploring, keeps the conversation going. So as we wrap up our deep dive with Sarah's, what's the big takeaway for our listeners today? Ooh, good question. For me, it's that knowledge isn't some stuffy thing in a book. It's alive, it's everywhere, and we're part of how it works. Couldn't have said it better myself. We're all explorers in this web of knowledge, and the journey's just beginning. Absolutely. To everyone listening, thanks for diving deep with us. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing.